Welcome everyone to our EDA Summit presentation in 2023. I'm here with my co-host Samuel Anand. He's the product manager for API-led integration at Roche. I am Sebastian Storr. I'm the event-driven integration product manager. And we are both part of the digital integration team that is basically covering all integration platforms at Roche. So today we want to talk about the importance of event-driven architecture for our enterprise. Why is it such a strong strategic focus and uh, what are our investments and our ideas to make that a successful area today and tomorrow? So next, Samuel will go into details about API and events as the enabling products. So we move from a traditional integration to a digital integration. What does that mean? We will look at a composable architecture and we will also see an example to highlight the things that are important to us, for you to understand and for the later picture to fully unfold. There's also a huge importance to an integration marketplace what that is and what we could achieve together with the Solas team to um, have a very successful proof of concept will also be lined out by Samuel. And last but not least, event as a product. So what do we have to do to really enable events for enterprise and what does it mean in the context of this presentation? With Roche, we have business both in the pharmaceutical and the diagnostics area. And whatever we do, whatever we think of, whatever is important is the patient is always in the center of our actions and our strategic approaches. So there's reason for our data that is beyond numbers and there's significance to its events. which means in a modern world, as Roche, all events are significant to us. So whatever happens in an order, whatever happens in a logistics process, whatever happens to mass the data, we want to make sure that this information is available in the blink of an eye to everyone who cares about it. And for complex business processes, we are looking forward to scale and make this more available with an event mesh that is brought to us also with the Solus platform. So we make informed decisions and also streamline our operations. We are getting closer to also automating the most critical processes to reduce human error and also to have the best quality in our processes possible. And of course, therefore, we need data to be available at the right time and at the right place to the right consumers. So we stay up to date with the latest developments also on the market, and we can identify trends and patterns that could be important for our next decision. So on the right hand side, you see a very abstract picture of the Solas PubSub event mesh, the data highway that we have established and also imagined to grow for the future so that all consuming applications can easily plug in to the data that they need. This could be by having another component in their application design, maybe with an API, and this will become more important, especially in this context of um, events as a product. Um, but at the end, we are also trying to enable the event mesh for legacy and DSP applications, platforms, and scenarios wherever we touch base with cloud or SaaS products. And we also are working close together with other solutions at Roche that provide capabilities like streaming. So really to enable our enterprise with the event mesh means that we optimize the communications across all applications. And sometimes it's not that easy. And that is what you will hopefully understand at the end of this presentation, where we need thought, thought leadership and commitment from us as IT, but also from the consumers to make this a reality. 
that we can efficiently exchange and process our data. So with that being said, it would not mean a lot if we could then not scale and adapt to the future needs. So with Solus, we have identified a partner that helps us to run proof of concepts, to run these examples that we will present to you today and later on make this data not only available to the consuming applications, but also down the line for secondary use in real-time data insights and much more. So with the platform for event-driven architecture, we have increased agility, like I said, also plug and play and reduce downtime because of the great infrastructure we could establish having various brokers in the cloud and on-premise working together seamlessly. So I wanted to give you a little bit more details about what it really means to us to have these things that I just mentioned and more as differentiators for event-driven architecture. And you will need the right product, but you will even need more than the right product. You will need a great partner. And I think this is why I want to stress this again. This is what we have found in our collaboration with Solas. And let's just quickly look at these different columns. We have scalability, performance, agility, resilience, flexibility, and maintainability. If we look at maintainability, for example, it is also important for me as a product manager that is responsible for um, maintaining the platform, the status and the operations that I can easy debug and test things. Throughout my day, there is always something happening that is raised to me as a concern. It does not mean that it has necessarily to do with the platform itself. It could also be just a hiccup identified in the whole end-to-end -end process. And for us, it's important to be a good partner. In this scenario, we would require great insights. That's why, for example, we love the addition to the Solas brokers, that is insights, that gives us detailed metrics about our queues and what's going on in the very detail. But also auto deployment and the capabilities that come more at a secondary use of the platform so besides its core functionalities itself, right? Um, we can see that there is a lot of potential and we definitely want to invest in the second half of the year to um, leverage more CICD capabilities, automatic deployments, provisioning, and so on and so forth. So let's go to the next slide. It's amazing to have such a great platform it's even greater to have a absolutely fantastic partnership and to have also the network with every one of you that is contributing with feedback and um, sharing the experiences in the user groups and beyond but we also need the right packaging now for this great capability within IT to make it available to application teams, to product teams, that it is easy to use. So we need to bring down the barrier this year to say, how do we package events? And how do we create this flexibility that we now have with the platform, with the data, with the event mesh, with event portal, with insights, all the big product suite that comes with Zola's platform, but how do we make it accessible for the consuming applications? And sometimes application teams are just not ready due to different constraints to implement an event native approach. And I think this is exactly where events as a product, where async APIs come into the picture. And I'm excited to hand it over to my colleague, Samuel, who will guide you through what we did as a proof of concept and give you a little bit more ideas about what it means to have events as a product. Thank you, Sebastian. Uh, that was fantastic. I hope you all enjoyed uh, the first part. Um, the nice insights into our strategy and how uh, we have come about and what we look forward to achieve. Now, in this part, I'm sure you know some of you would have heard about 
KPIs and events as a building blocks for a composable enterprise in the last year's EDS summit. Uh, if you had tuned in, you would have heard one of our colleagues by name Suresh talked about this. Yeah. Uh, very, very strategic approaches that we have in integration style uh, that we adopted a couple of years back. Maybe for those who have not attended and a quick recap, because this uh, set the stage uh, in terms of you know how we use and what kind of patterns we use and how we have gone about this journey. So there are a number of ways that we could unlock data from a business application or a system. Uh, probably in this scenario, let's take two of them, the API-led approach and the event-driven approach. And these are two strategic, strategic approaches even for us. They are two different paradigms if you look at it. Totally two different ways to expose data. Uh, they are complementary as well. That's why you know we love it because it goes hand in hand, uh, used pretty much uh, across the board. And um, they are fantastic architectural styles to liberate data from systems, your business applications at different levels. Uh, the goal ultimately for both would aim to reuse the assets that are produced, whether it is the APIs, the REST APIs on the API-led approach, or the events, which Sebastian talked about, uh, was now packaged as a product, could be reused as well. So these are assets and they contribute to the composable business architecture. That's fundamental you know, in our uh, API and event-driven approach. And uh, this is what we have gone about. Now, talking about you know, the overall uh, approach and our journey the past uh, few years, this, is, this gives us sort of a view how Roche has moved away from a traditional point point-to-point -point type of integration model to a more mo modern architecture that you see, uh, leveraging, again, um, approaches like API-led and event-driven architecture, where our goal is to design and deploy once and uh, reuse multiple times. Um, on the left-hand side that you see is a complex old architecture, but in the middle that you see is basically the uh, composable architecture that API and events have brought about, whether it's an application network using API or the event mesh that offers the uh, best-in-class uh, event network, right? So with this, we could compose, we can recompose integration flows, and uh, they are also building blocks, right? So they could, uh, you don't need to build it from scratch up, but rather you could reuse what, what is already brought in. The, the most important thing is on the right-hand side of the slide that you see is the marketplace. That's very critical to this particular architecture. Uh, when you harvest an API as a product or an event as a product, you need to bring that into a place. So what we did uh, a year back was to land a marketplace, which we call this integration marketplace, where assets from multiple different platforms within our digital integration landscape at Roche can bring their assets in. Uh, of course, reusability is achieved. You know, when you build upon the layers of APIs or uh, you publish once and subscribe many times when it comes to an event-driven architecture. We're taking examples of an API and event, but this could uh, be expanded across to a streaming layer or could to, to be an, on the ETL layer or could be on the B2B layer um, anywhere, right? So this could be reused. But um, we achieved this using API and events um, in the past three years of we moving away from the traditional network model, a traditional way of uh, in doing integration to the more modern way of doing uh, integration using API and events. Now, you might have questions about how do we achieve this you know, in a typical real-time scenario. For example, I just brought this example to talk about how do we, because if you have to think API and events as uh, products, how do we call out those in a, in a typical integration flow? In this scenario that you see, uh, if batch master is basically the data, as that's the core of the product that we are trying to unlock um, the value from, and from that is from the S4 HANA as a, as a core system of record, let's say. So you could expose the data in the form of both API and events. So one is probably to um, give pe to people you know, who would like to uh, on demand basis, and the other one is to basically deliver uh, at once uh, when it is made available, that is through the event uh, channel. Both are available, these are assets. You could, you could see in this example that uh, we would take both those assets. These are purpose-built products. 
in this flow. And uh, once it is identified as, as a reusable asset or, or as a asset that is going to be reused more than once, then they are brought out of this particular uh, instance and they are not thrown away after our integration is done, but brought into the marketplace that one could continuously look at it and, um, you know, and could reuse where required. So before building in um, another flow next time, the, and a community member or a consumer can always come to the marketplace and look for it. Um, if it is not available or what, or what they are looking for, they can always then go ahead and build something from scratch up. If it is there, they could always reuse it. So that's a simple fundamental example of how we go about um, an API-led and our even driven uh, solution development and how we call out API products out of that. Now, what, what one, one term that I've been using consistently throughout is uh, a marketplace. It's critical for us. And we say this in a, in a it's a one-stop shop or uh, a door to all the integration assets that we might have across the board. I want to kind of call out, um, you know, our architect who has put together this slide and you can see that he is nicely called out. You know, there are multiple platforms that we have, but on the top that you have one, one marketplace where we, we call it as a unified or a federate, federated catalog of integration assets from different platforms that you would, would bring in. And it's very, very critical for us. We could have multiple different platforms, but we cannot have multiple different marketplaces, right? So we need to have one. And that's important for us to, um, important enough from an end user perspective as well. It's easy for them to come to one place and discover all the assets and uh, choose what they want to, ask for access. And uh, seamlessly then they can uh, uh, choose between their different type that they want. Even in the previous example that I talked about the batch master, if a user wants it in an API, they can come still search the same marketplace, pick up the API, and they can go ahead and use it. Or if they wanted to be uh, even driven, they can still come to the marketplace, look for an event, and then they can ask for access and get it done. It's as, as simple as that. Um, so this is very, very important. Now, all of this is uh, very nice, as, as you would have heard, that you, you might think that we've it's like a bit of roses that the past three years that we came about, but it is truly not. With all of these you know, different tools and, uh, and tool sets, you know, you'll always have many, many, many challenges. I'm sure others would have gone through this as well. It's a compelling vision, isn't it? Also, it's a great strategy you know, if you were to look at it from a hindsight. For us, yes, it was. But um, on the other hand, I know it also brought about a number of challenges. Some of them that you could see, multi-vendor technology that is different uh, technologies that comes together and creates again a multi-technology landscape different platforms coming together to bring again bring in more complexity to that now you know we wanted to have a unified way that we could design an api it could be whether it is a rest api or an async api or what is more futuristic that is in the that's coming up uh, is graphql in a api so how do we design all of that uh, with an api first mindset but with all through one common with the one common design tool, this is going to be difficult. That's the biggest challenge that we had. And the other one that I talked about in the previous uh, slide was how do you have one marketplace that can pull in all the assets from across different integration tools? And finally, I'm sure you know some of you would face this as well. Can we have one monitoring plane and uh, and, a, and a governance setup across the board? Yeah. So these challenges for us. Um, are glaring at our face, but these are opportunities too, if you look at it, right? So this quest for uh, unifying this experience of uh, how to put the pieces together, um, and then working with uh, the Solace product team and their leadership, we thought, you know, why don't we do something together? And also, we'll, if you have to zoom into event here, we said that the concept of event as a product, uh, where somebody can design it as an, AP, as an async API, then you are able to deploy it and um, publish it into the marketplace. You manage it. And of course, you're able to govern it as well, right? So an async API into an event product, into the marketplace, sounds interesting. So we said, this is a great concept. How about we going ahead to build it and see? Okay, so that's what uh, Sebastian talked about. It's a kind of a thought leadership. Uh, others are trying it out as well, but I would like to really uh, thank uh, Solace at this point in time, you know, for their great collaboration in this proof of concept. So 
In simple terms, what we did in this was that you see in the screen. So our goal was basically to package um, event as a product and uh, and taking API first approach. Okay. So typically in a class um, or an enterprise setup uh, like Roche, you know, so we have an information model where our data is managed uh, in a central repository or you know, in a, the data models where it is managed by information architects. Um, and we have you know, those schemas, canonical models maintained. For, us, for, for this uh, proof of concept, we took Oxygen XML giving us that sort of a, a tool with its capability to help you know, manage that JSON schema. Okay. Step number two that we were able to do from that was to um, produce an open API spec as well as an async API spec. Now, the moment API async API is ready, it is still a, a, a simple bare spec with no server details. There are no quality of service details around it. That's where you, know, you would need um, somebody who could package it because otherwise it is just a simple contract, right? Uh, with no, no uh, values in it. That's, that's where the step two comes, where uh, Solace is built. Um, and they are also continuing to work on, on their event portal strategy, where you would be able to bring in uh, one or multiple async APIs, and you would be able to package it. And uh, we were able to do that. Um, so there, there is, a, there is a, a tool which kind of you know, puts all this together, package it with the server details, and then also add the quality of service, and would be able to push it to a marketplace. Of course, our marketplace is based on uh, Salesforce Cloud. And, uh, and we, we were able to build, up for this proof of concept, a sort of a, a bridge that would basically push, allow Solus to push that into the marketplace, into the catalog. Of course, this is, a, like I said earlier on, this is a catalog where you have the REST APIs, you have the event APIs, and other uh, items coming in. So even in the event cat catalog, you know, you would see um, the same as how a REST API is represented in an async API, or in this case, async API packaged as a even uh, as a product into it. From an end user perspective, it's amazing because the experience that they would get is seamless. REST API, event API, or tomorrow it could be GraphQL, or it could be a, a stream that's coming in from Kafka, and you know, all of them, you know, would have a similar view. And from a producer or from a product owner perspective, it's a self-service. Now our goal is to make sure that they will pick and choose from the catalog and then they should be able to publish it after doing some proofreading and so on. Okay. So you know, we were able to do this entire round trip and uh, the consumers would come, look for it, look for an event product. They're able to pro ask for an access, goes back to the product owners for approvals. And all of this was automated. Like I said, since this is a proof of concept and you now we were able to do with one async API, but in the future, as we see that Solus is building up, uh, the, uh, I think they're uh, really working to make, make, make sure that you know, more APIs can be packaged in one uh, event uh, product. So this is what we achieved and um, it is one of its class and we're lo looking to see like Sebastian said, how do we put this across to our consumers in, in a very simplified way or in a very simplistic way that they should be able to self-serve themselves uh, without any complexity. That's the goal of this entire uh, proof of concept. Uh, again, kudos to the entire team that uh, worked and some architects like Carlos who's not here, but uh, you know it was fantastic work as a team. Now in summary, um, for you all to know, you know how, first for us, you know, what, how the way that we did was to move away from the traditional mindset of doing integration and look towards more modern API or an event driven architecture, for examples. And there are a lot of there's a lot of value in it. Uh, of course, we talked about reuse, composability, and potentially cost avoidance too. And secondly, you know, treat integration assets such as APIs and events as uh, enabling products. It's very, very important. And uh, it should have its own full life cycle, like I explained as well in the in the previous slide. Uh, and add self-service capabilities to manage them and allow uh, it to um, also you know, uh, grow because more, more you make it available as an enabling product, more and more people will reuse it as well. Then you need to think about a unified API management platform 
like how uh, it it is a challenge for us, but we are looking at uh, having one which where we will be able to design, manage, govern, and observe all under one. And finally, the integration marketplace, which I talked about. An important aspect is to have a unified and a federated catalog where you can bring in all of your uh, integration assets. That's in summary, you know, what um, you could take away from the session. Thanks for tuning in and uh, looking forward to hearing back from you. If you have any questions, happy to answer. Thank you.